Rugby players, if we want to perform well on the weekend and reduce our risk of injury, we all need to have a solid warm-up. There's no point getting to the field and guessing what you need to do or relying on someone else to make sure that you're warming up correctly. My name is Alex. I work in Premiership Rugby as a sports physiotherapist, and here is a solid warm-up that you can do before any match or game to ensure that you are warm, you are loose, and you are contact ready. In this video, we're going to cover just that. We've got our general warm for mobility, we've got our sprint mechanics to make sure that we're nice and fast, and then we've also got our contact warm-up, and this can be all done on your own. The only bits that you'll need to do is before the match, get a bag and do some contact with a friend. And guys, at any point in time in this video, if you think it's helped, please drop us a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any further videos. Rugby players, here is a complete contact ready warm up that you can do to get ready for any match or training. Our goal is to initially get warm, so starting off with a run of the pitch is a great way to begin. 10 to 15 meter grip, we're gonna start off with our dynamic warm up. Beginning with our hips, we're doing a karaoke where we're really trying to get that top leg over and around and then pairing that with a side shuffle. Make sure your heels don't click together, really pushing off from that inside leg. Next, we're moving on to our hamstrings, which is really important. This monster kick is a nice way to get some length through the hamstring. I don't mind if your knee is bent when doing this. Make sure to really warm up and follow through. Now we're interested in shooing the chickens, so we're trying to keep our knee a little bit bent, lots of lumbar flexion, moving through our back and getting our hamstring warm as well as our lumbar spine. We've got opening, closing the gate, really try and drive your knee up as high as you can, bringing it up and around, exploring your hip range of motion as much as you can. We need to get into jackal and scrum position, so make sure we're nice and loose through our hips is important. For all these exercises, one to two lengths of the 15 meter grid is enough. We want to get warm, but it's a fine line between getting warm and getting tired. Make sure that we don't get lazy, however, really make sure you get the knee up nice and high and open and close the gate. Using a fence partner or the post, we're gonna do our leg swings forward and side. Really important for anyone that has to kick. We wanna get our quads and our hips as warm as possible here. Start with small swings, build up to greater range of motion, bigger kicks, bigger swings. We're doing front and side, make sure we explore as much range of motion as possible. Really use this to explore the hips, get them nice and warm. We wanna reduce the risk of calf strain, so make sure that we warm them up with these calf pumps. A set of 20 will do nicely. From here, we're gonna get onto all fours and we're doing thoracic rotation, also known as threading the needle. About five to 10 of these, either side is a great way to get that upper half moving. Then onto the lumbar spine, we've got lumbar rotation, same again, five to 10 rotations per side. Especially for people jackling and scrummaging, we wanna make sure that our lumbar spine is nice and warm, nice and loose and able to take load. If you need more time to get warm in this area, take that time. Also great for posterior flexibility and getting everything warm are rollouts. These are great for hamstring flexibility, lumbar spine flexibility. Once again, five to 10 reps of these is a great way to get that posterior chain loose. Now we're into more of our muscle activation. We're still getting ourselves moving here. We've got double leg glute bridge, really tucking our pelvis underneath ourselves, squeezing the glutes by driving through our heels. Eight to 12 reps of these. And then we're into eight reps of single leg glute bridge on either side just to make each leg work independently of each other. Please don't skip these, make sure you get through these in your warm up. More dynamic hamstring work, we're doing flicks and raises, so flicking in the air nice and quick. Once again, eight flicks and then into a straight leg raise for eight and then we swap onto the other side. We then got our hip and hamstring rocks. So what we're trying to do here is when we lean forward, get a hip flexor stretch and then when we lean back, we get a hamstring stretch. Big squeeze through the hip flexor, big squeeze through the hammy with each of those motions. Then we're popping our leg out to the side and doing a ductal rock, making sure that it's nice and warm. Male rugby players especially tend to suffer with groin pains, so this is important to do. Now onto our jumping and landing, please don't underestimate this, this is extremely important. We're gonna do a double leg jump to a double leg land and then moving on to a double leg jump to a single leg land. We can do between four to eight reps of nice. each of these exercises. Do your best to jump as high as you can good. and then land with good control. This means our knee doesn't shoot forwards right. or buckle that's inwards right. or that we don't try and lean people over like too to fast. See Stay fail. in yep. control. We then to compass hops, jumping over a line, forwards, backwards, and then side and side. About six to 10 hops in each direction. Swapping legs Swap is a feet. great way to warp that ankle. Make sure you try and keep your heel off the ground as much as you can. Try to work on keeping that ankle stiff. Now we're moving on to a slightly extended warm up here. Not everyone needs to do these jumps if they don't want to, but I think they are important. We've got pogo jumps, moving forward in the grin, getting as high as we can. Just one length for this. We then got our lateral bounds over a line, trying just to work on that dynamic stability of the hip. We're trying to keep that knee nice and strong, not trying to let our leg 
buckle forward or inwards and trying to explode as high as we can. Finally, we are into an axle and a D cell. Ah. We're sprinting forward, stopping quickly. We're probably doing Beautiful about three of these over a 10 meter grid. Finally, we throw it all together and do two to three small axles cells and D cells together. Once again, this is getting ourselves warm, getting our heart rate up. This is really important in our fight to prevent injury and improve performance. For many people, that will be enough for them to get warm for a game of rugby. For people that want to take it another level further, like the professionals do, here we're working on things that are important for sprinting, which is stiff ankles. Here we try to keep our knee and our hips locked our ankles are strong and we're not letting our heels hit the floor and we're just bouncing forward by using our calf muscles. We're not using our knees. Ned's keeping his knees nice and locked there. The thing is about force expression. It's pushing hard into the ground to propel yourself forward. A March is doing just that. It's about the top leg pushing down. It's not about the bottom leg lifting up. So when you're doing this, just think about the top leg pushing down all the time. So the March will set you up for doing a skip which is when, when you push down, we're actually just immediately swapping onto the other leg, trying to keep that hip, knee, and ankle locked. Just think about smacking that top foot down, hammering underneath the middle of our body, and keeping everything nice and stiff. Those ankles are stiff, those knees are locked when they hit the ground, and our hips are tight. If the hips, knees, and ankles can get locked sufficiently, we'll get triple extension and reduce energy leakage, which allows you to propel yourself forward faster. Into our A run, which is not high knees, because we're still like thinking about pushing down to the ground hard. So hammer down, keep those hips, knees, and ankles locked, just like an A skip. A skip is the same mechanics as an A That's skip, good. but when that top leg gets good. to the top, instead of hammering straight down, it kicks around and down. However, Shrunk we're toes. still bringing that foot underneath ah, our there center you go. of mass. It's still finishing underneath ourselves. We use the B skip to once again keep the ankle stiff but to warm up the hamstring. Moving on to our scissors and our mechanics, we're pulling with our hips and our feet. So our knees are taken out of the equation. We keep them as locked as possible. Pull away from the ground with your hips and your feet and propel yourself forward. From there, we're into our acceleration over 10 meters again. Now, if you're doing the full warm up, yeah, this is great. when you do those 10 meter accelerations. You wouldn't do them earlier. You don't want to be doing five to six, 10 to 15 meter sprints before the game. Two to three is enough to get ourselves moving quickly. When doing these, we're thinking about those mechanics where we're pushing down into the ground hard, expressing force. We can do yep. them from different start positions, like from the floor, as it's probably a little yeah, bit done. more rugby specific. We're into the third and last phase of this warm up, which is our contact warm up. Starting off with a bear crawl, it's a great way to get load through the shoulders and get them warm. It also works in our body position and our body height, which is important for scrummaging and rucking. Now, from a bear crawl position, we're going into a shootout where we start in a bear crawl and we launch forward and we catch ourselves. This is great for getting good force control and absorption through the shoulders. Between four to six of these, if done correctly, will be enough. Similar rep schemes for falling now. So from kneeling position, we try to catch ourselves in a deeper position. This gets our pecs working, gets our delts working, and we're making sure that we're getting nice and warm through our entire upper body to reduce the risk of shoulder dislocations and get ourselves ready for heavy contact. And then play around with your different landing positions. Moving on yep. to a bear escape, which can be done by yourself with a friend. So if you're by yourself, around the pole is a great way to ensure that you're moving dynamically, your hands are moving across the body, Body, getting yourself nice and warm this might feel like it looks a little bit silly but i tell you what it gets your shoulders nice and warm and ready for contact this is how you play the game with your partner don't let your partner touch your heels you've got to try and escape he's got to try and get around and the person on the floor needs to respond by keeping themselves in front these are some great warm-up exercises that can be done with a friend so if someone is around that you can do contact with definitely grab them for this and a few other exercises as well. Moving on to our wrestling, this is a great way to get yourself nice and warm, so you do need a partner for this. By lying in our back, the person has to use their abdominals, use their hip flexors, and try and get up. If the person has to start on their belly, they're using more of their delts and their shoulders and trying to use their back muscles to roll off, so they're ensuring their whole body is getting warm. This can also be done in a standing position, so the other person crosses their arms and then has to try and break free. So both partners are working really hard here and they're getting nice and warm to their upper body. Then we have our double arm under, where we have one person starts with one arm up and one arm under, and then we're trying to get both our arms under our opposition and lift them up. And that is the Ash Rugby full warm-up for rugby. If you like this, please subscribe and we'll see you in another video.